Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome again, viewers, to our program, Medicine of the Prophet with Professor Rashid Bika. I'm your host, Farooq Hussain, and today's program will be looking at the two types of illnesses according to Tib al Nabawi, which focuses on the illness of the body and the illness of the mind, of the heart, I beg your pardon. This illness of the heart is in essence the illness of the soul. And according to Tib al Nabawi, it's the most important. Now, both these illnesses result from making wrong decisions, as it were, according to the gift that has been bestowed upon people, which is the gift of free will. This episode will emphasize how to prevent the illnesses of the soul. So, I suppose the larger question is what is its relevance to healthy living? And how do these illnesses arise? I'm very pleased to be joined in the studio today with Sheikh Ashraf Dokrat. And I suppose um, the first question then, Sheikh Ashraf Dokrat, is to you. To ask you, um, of the two types of illnesses, as believers, which is the more damaging, as it were? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'ad. Farooq, you are very correct when you say that there are two types of illnesses. In fact, it is very significant that uh, the scholars of Tibun Nabawi, Ibn Jawziya, for example, have identified these two types of, of sicknesses. Ibn Jawziya, right in the beginning, and it's very significant that he does so, he says that al-mardu naw'an, that sicknesses are of two types, mardul qurub wa mardul abdan, that you have sicknesses of the heart and sicknesses of the body. وَهُمَا مَذْكُرَانِ فِي الْقُرْآنِ And both of these are mentioned and are, have got reference in the Qur'an al kareem Now, if we consider our journey in this world to be a journey for a limited time in the bodies that we have and for an eternal while in far as our soul is concerned, in, our, in other words, our soul exists forever and will actually travel to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then certainly the, body, the, the sicknesses and the amrath and the, the, the illnesses of the heart and the soul are much more significant and much more damaging and something that we should really be concerned about. Well, let me draw in Professor Bika and pose the question to Professor Bika. Uh, Prof, how different then is this approach to so-called Western medicine? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I think to answer that question, I want to just quote a saying from St. Thomas Aquinas. Mm. He says, it is not my soul that thinks or my body that eats, but I that do both. Now again, this immediately tells you that the difference is the focus is not on the soul or the body, but me as an individual. And again, they bring in this concept that the mind controls everything. So the seat from, an, from a secular, uh, secular perspective, mm. is that ultimately it's the mind or, or the consciousness, everything rests in the mind. Okay. Whereas from an Islamic perspective, we know that the soul is, is, uh, resides in the heart. Mm. Okay. And, and ultimately from the Islamic perspective, we talk about body and soul, where, whereas uh, Sheikh, Sheikh Ashraf has mentioned, the body is only for this world, and the soul is eternal. Start from, from, from uh, prior to us being in this world, and of course, carries on. Of course, so this, this, this makes us really sort of uh, understand the difference between the two. Mm. There's a lovely Sufi uh, uh, saying, mm. which, you know, if from the books <coughs> of, of Lali Bakhtiyar. She says, Sufis regard the heart as the essence of the self. It symbolizes the whole human personality or personality in its wholeness. It is the heart which makes the, hum the human being human. It is that which separates the human being from all other creatures. It is that which enables the human being to have knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to accept or reject his counseling to the positive and prevention of the negative. The heart is the seat of consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Mm. It, and interestingly, it is also called kalb, meaning turning, revolving, inverting, because it contains two worlds within itself, the physical or material world and the spiritual world. And it's constantly turning 
from one to another. So this, this gives you the, the concept that, that the, the heart, the soul resides in the heart, and, and the soul is drawn between spirituality and, of course, earthly life. So, you know, it's so, it's so, uh, so specific mm -hmm. that it's, it is body and soul, whereas, of course, the, the, the Western approach is body, mind, and soul, but the focus is consciousness is in the brain or, 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 or you know, in the mind, whereas in Islam, consciousness is in the soul. So the one tradition is more technical and the other tradition is more integrated. And uh, I suppose it'd be useful to draw in uh, Sheikh uh, Ashraf uh, now and to ask the question, so what then are the, are the types of illnesses of the heart or, and or the soul? Yes, I think you know, scholars have looked at this very carefully and uh, have identified several uh, different illnesses of the heart, illnesses of the soul, and have actually mentioned these and even provided the cures for these razail or illnesses that, that, that exist in, in the person's heart and have shown many ways of uh, curing one uh, from, from, from these illnesses. Basically, we can divide these into two groups. The one are, uh, that we can call shubahat or uh, illnesses of the soul that come out of doubt and that come out of uncertainty. And the, the other are what we can call shahawat, and that is sicknesses and illnesses of the heart and soul that arise out of desire and temptation. So these are the two broad categories in which we can divide these type of, of illnesses of the soul into. What a fascinating um, insight that you have proffered us, uh, both uh, Professor Bika and uh, Sheikh Ashraf Dokrat. We'll continue this discussion, folks, after the break. And when we come back, we will ask our guest, uh, Sheikh Ashraf, as well as Professor Bika, to elaborate on the two types of diseases of the heart. See you in a bit. watching Medicine of the Prophet, your guide to healthy living with Professor Rashid Bika. I'm your host, Farooq Hussain, and our guest in the studio is Sheikh Ashraf Dokrat. Earlier, we uh, looked at the integrated approach to dealing with uh, illnesses of the mind as well as uh, or the body and illnesses of the heart or the soul. In this part of the program, I will be asking, I will be asking both Professor Bika as well as Sheikh Ashraf Dakrat um, to tell us more about the types of illnesses of the heart. Perhaps specifically then to um, Sheikh Ashraf Dakrat, um, what then are the types of the two types of illnesses of the heart, Sheikh? Yes, the first is that of shubahat or obfuscations, and what we mean by this is that these are the diseases that relate to an impairment of understanding, especially understanding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one's relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, if one is fearful um, about one's provision and whether Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide for one or not, then this is considered a disease of the heart, in fact, because a sound heart has firm knowledge and firm yaqeen and firm faith that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide and that heart has no doubt and has got no anxiety. So similarly, shubahat refers to those aspects of the soul, those aspects of the heart that are, uh, ref are closely linked to, uh, for example, shaitan's whisperings, the, the wasawis of shaitan, um, the, the type of, of instigations of shaitan that have their, 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 their manifestation in things like jealousy, uh, cap rise, uh, envy, hatred, uh, the desire for the dunya, the desire for the world, all of that form part of these shubahat. And these come out of, of, of a doubt. Linked to this is also the doubt that one has about faith, the doubt that one has about Allah and His Rasul and the teachings of Allah and His Rasul. So all of these would fall under the ambit of uh, shubahat. Uh, the second type is then those type of illnesses that come into the person's heart as a result of uh, a person following the base desires, the nafs, and uh, the, the, uh, what we call then the shahawat, 
the, 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 the desires. And these uh, desires are part of our natural makeup, but where they exceed the natural bounds and where they then violate the hudud and the limits that have been set by the Sharia, and, and man at all costs tries to satisfy these uh, shahwat, then this falls out, of the, um, uh, falls out of the boundaries of the Sharia and results and, and, can, and can become an illness then for the person. Fascinating, most insightful. And it, it's clearly, it's again a reinforcement of the idea of integrating um, one's understanding of what is the cause of illnesses of the, the physical level as well as at the level of the soul then. So, uh, perhaps it's useful to ask uh, Professor Bika to um, expand a bit on um, the second category of the illnesses of the heart. Certainly, Farouk. In fact, as Mulana, uh, I mean, Sheikh Ashraf has mentioned, the shahwat being linked to the base elements of man. Mm. And one of the terms used is passion. Okay. And of course, this kind of base elements in man or passion is common to both man and animals as well. Right. But, the, but the difference being that in, in, in animals, animals are in a way programmed in a certain way. You know, animals know, know when to eat, when to kill for food, etc. They know how to live off the environment. So, so animals have got passion, but with limited free will. They are programmed to do certain things, to obviously live well, etc. But, but also sort of linked onto, onto, onto Shawat, we talk about physical needs. Now, physical needs, both in man and, and animals, covers two different components. The one is the preservation of the individual, Preservation of the of individual mean for needs of myself, food, shelter, you know, uh, uh, the comforts of life. Then the second one is what we call pursuits of pleasure and avoidance of pain. So both in man and animals, these these sort of characteristics or attributes are there. However, when it comes to man, the difference between man and animals is that man has got the gift of free will, which Allah Taala has bestowed upon us. And with this gift of free will also comes a certain responsibility, mm -hmm. responsibility of conscience. In other words, what is right and what is wrong. So this whole discussion then f focuses around choices. As men, we are not like, like animals programmed. So because, because we can make choices, mm -hmm. we can either make choices to do good or we can make choices to, to do wrong. And this is where, unfortunately, this constant sort of a, a, a constant relationship or balance between the spiritual side and the animal side is, is a constant thing that, that, that flows, you know, in our soul, you know, with the heart, with the curve, you know, rotating all, all the time. To be a bird and just to build nests, or to be a bee and just to make honey. But then one loses out on this wonderful question of choice and free will. And of course, Allah has bestowed that upon us, and so I suppose it's our jihad, it's our battle from birth till the end of our time. Um, we have for you a, a short clip um, focusing on psychosomatic disorders and it's uh, with Dr. Zaida Kortu, a, a TIB uh, doctor uh, uh, practitioner, and she'll be talking to us on mental and emotional disorders. As a TIB doctor, I'm often confronted with patients, clients that come in who have disorders related to their emotions, uh, mental issues, and, and not mental in the way that we think, you know, it's a bad thing, but mentally in, in the psychological aspect of things. And what happens is it links in so nicely with what we were told years ago, okay? by the Prophet centuries ago, where that there are two types of conditions, an illness that affects the body and an illness of the heart. What we don't realize is how our emotions actually affect all our major organs in the body. And um, we then wonder why they manifest themselves physically. And over the years, and I'm, I'm talking like 20 years, because of the hadith, I went looking to find out how emotions actually affect wellness. And for example, if there is a lot of anger, frustration, jealousy, envy, those affect the liver, your eyes, your bladder. 
if you are very fearful, that fear then manifests itself in a kidney condition, a bladder condition, or a problem with your ears. And if you think about the shape of the ears, they're almost the same shape as your kidney, which is also the same shape as a fetus. And so therefore the fear would then manifest throughout the body, but really affect the kidney, ears, and bladder. Lung, skin, large intestines are all affected by sadness and then goes into deep depression. And, and this then manifests itself in those areas, like your asthmas, your eczemas, your indigestion, your hernias. The spleen, the stomach, and the pancreas are totally uh, affected by worry, anxiety, and misery. And you find that these are the main problems of stress that people have these days. And therefore, it's very important to find ways of dealing with those things. The heart and small intestines deals with things like if there's extensive hatred, cruelty, and um, impatience. And if they have these, they start getting conditions that affect the heart and small intestines. I think it's just very important for people to realize that the West has only figured out now that the emotions affect wellness, whereas Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been saying it for years that this is the issue. I think what's very important is for people to realize how important it is for them to become emotionally intelligent, which is referred to as EQ at the moment, and that they need to figure out what their emotions are so that they can start controlling them to a certain extent and not have their emotions control them. And this will then bring about complete psychological and um, physical wellness in every individual. Dr. Zaida Kortu, discussing mental and emotional disorders. These, according to our topic and according to our study of medicine, are actually manifestations of illnesses of the soul. Now, after the break, we will discuss how to avoid illnesses of the body and especially illnesses of the heart or the soul. Welcome back. You with our guest uh, Ashraf Dokrat as well as Professor Bika and I'm your host Farooq Hussain. We're looking at the question of illnesses of the heart and illnesses of the body. Specifically we're looking and debating and deepening our discussion and understanding around issues of illnesses of the soul or the heart. Now medicine in and of itself cannot cure you. Ultimately, um, the curative power lies with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I should now like to just draw in uh, uh, Sheikh Ashraf Dokrat and ask how important, Sheikh, is it to avoid diseases of the heart or the soul? There is no doubt, Farooq, that diseases of the heart are more damaging and more serious than diseases of the body. Mm. Uh, Ibn Jawziya, the famous scholar, who authored the book Tibur Nabawi, Medicine of the Pro Prophet. Uh, this is what he's got to say on the topic. And it's, he says that restoration of the body without restoration of the heart is of no benefit. He's quite emphatic then. Whereas damage to the body while the soul is at peace brings limited harm. For it is a temporary damage which can be followed by permanent and complete cure. So what is he saying? He's telling us that in order to ensure a healthy body, we need to make sure that we have a sound and healthy heart and soul. It is for this reason that Rasulullah has prescribed to us in the hadith uh, the importance, for example, and the significance of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is through the dhikr Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran al-Kareem that the hearts find solace. And so uh, through practices like meditation, the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfilling our ibadat, fulfilling our, our, our worship, uh, as it should be done with the correct concentration, with the correct devotion, one is able to remedy a great number of illnesses of the soul. And one's soul then is connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the source really for all peace and for the all goodness that needs to come to the soul. Sheikh Ashraf, you make it sound so easy. And of course, <laughs> I, I'm very grateful that you are um, 
allowing me to, 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 to make sure that life and living is so accessible and it has a possibility for improvement. Um, and I, I would now like to just ask uh, Professor uh, Beaker to help me uh, and extend my conceptual boundaries because my question is a very practical one. Can you give us any advice on how to avoid the illnesses of the soul? I think further to what uh, Sheikh Ashraf has mentioned, you know, besides zikr, etc., etc., if one guards or one takes into account the attributes or the characteristics that, that human emotions have, and, and if one puts that into perspective, uh, there was a lovely b book I read once, you know, called When You Hear Who Beats Think of, of, of a Zebra. And in that book, the, the author, Shems Friedlander, talks about the human body, the human being, us. We think, we see, and we feel. Now, now when we think, obviously, you know, with the brain, there are two aspects, aspects linked. One is intelligence, but if, if intelligence is overrun with arrogance, then intelligence is gone. Okay, then we lose out automatically. The other side we see with our eyes, and when we see our eyes, we see things, and this should instill in us uh, the attribute of conscience, to see what is right, to see what is wrong. Okay, now on the other side of the coin, if a person has got uncontrolled ambition, then obviously conscience falls by the wayside. Similarly, and, and, and finally, our hearts have been created to have compassion. But if envy comes into our hearts, then obviously compassion is gone. So it's a balance between, between intelligence and arrogance, between conscience and, and uncontrolled ambition, and between compassion and envy. So those are the six attributes they want us to balance. To and of course, these are all within our power. Okay, added, I mean, of course, with zikr and meditation, you know, and of course, Allah tells rahmat, obviously will we'll move towards the spiritual side and be on the right side of things. Well, both of you have not failed to extend my uh, conceptual boundaries. And I should now just ask uh, um, Sheikh Ashraf Dokrat to uh, perhaps proffer um, some uh, closing comments in tying up the loose ends, as it were. Yes, I think we must firstly realize that uh, physical illnesses, uh, are, are, are the, the, the harms of physical illnesses are limited compared to the harms that spiritual illnesses have. Illnesses of the soul have a much greater impact on our well-being because these impact on our akhirah, on our everlasting life in the akhirah. And so to make sure that our souls are purified from these razail, these blameworthy qualities, we have to bring into our lives, once again, the Quran, the teachings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the teachings of his beloved Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by bringing the, these things into our lives, we will purify our souls and our souls will once again be linked to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we will save ourselves then from these illnesses that reside in the heart and that have all these disastrous consequences. Thank you very much, uh, Sheikh Ashraf. It would be entirely remiss of me not to ask uh, Professor Baker to also offer uh, us some uh, closing comments in tying up uh, the loose ends. I think, I think uh, Sheikh Ashraf has, has covered most of it. All that I can say, just re-establish re or re-emphasize, re living according to the sunnah, is definitely the ideal way of life. And I think we as Muslims have got this, this guidance, the guide to a better life. Thank you very much. Jazakallah to both of you. you. It's time to tie up the loose ends. And I suppose um, as we um, have gleaned in the course of this uh, program, our take-home message um, in summary will include that according to Tib al-Nabawi, there are two types of illnesses, the illnesses of the body and the illness of the heart, which both Professor Bika and um, Sheikh Ashraf Dokrat so eminently and eloquently um, alluded to. And the heart contains two worlds, the physical and the spiritual, where the body and the soul unite. Uh, both uh, Professor Bika and uh, Sheikh Ashraf Dokrat continued and said that the sickness of the heart are of two types, the sicknesses of uncertainty and doubt, and sicknesses of desire and temptation that undermine it. Now, as human beings, yes, we are blessed with uh, free will, 
But um, with that comes um, the attendant responsibility on how to make the right choices and to avoid both illnesses of the body and illnesses of the heart or the soul. And so by practicing the medicine of the Prophet, your guide to healthy living, you can be assured that Allah will be with you, inshallah. Ameen. So for now, it's a very good uh, bye to all of our viewers and we hope you have to join us next week again. So from me, Farooq Hussain, in Johannesburg, South Africa, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.